Well, hello everyone. My name is Jan Jokus. I am uh, one of the authors of the new Linux driver for the Mixman DM2 MIDI console. Um, the console, for those of you who are not familiar with it, looks like this. Um, it's pretty cheap hardware, but uh, what's great about it is that it's very affordable. Uh, you can get one for about $40, I think. Um, it's got two large wheels, a uh, joystick, several buttons, a crossfader, of course. And um, what's special about it are these LED buttons um, that you can map to different things. And the essential thing that the driver does is that it uses the buttons together with the wheels to create a lot of um, uh, controls, MIDI controls for highs, mids, lows, and so on. We'll look at that in a minute. So let's go to it. Let's look at how to compile the driver first. I zoomed into a uh, terminal. I assume that you are familiar with the tar command and are able to uh, unzip uh, this package, uh, which contains essentially the driver itself, a header file, and a make file. Um, over here you see the configuration for mix, which we will be using later on. And uh, for older kernel versions, you need to patch the kernel to compile this. But we will not cover that over here. Um, I assume you are running the same kernel as I do. You need version 2624 because uh, inside the kernel some things have changed in the USB interface in the meantime. So uh, versions prior to that will work but only with a little bit of tweaking to the kernel. You simply type make provided that you have the sources installed and uh, you will quite quickly get a finished module named dm2. Now to install that you can use the make command again. Um, this will install into, let's have a look here, into the miscellaneous module section. Um, to be sure that everything is okay you should do a debmod minus a and you're done. That's it. To confirm the driver has compiled and installed correctly, um, what you do is you plug the DM2 in and you watch the lights while doing that. And if this happens, everything is okay. The lights mean something. Uh, they mean that during this initial phase of the driver, the values of the joystick and the fader are being used as center points. Um, the faders and uh, the fader and joystick are auto calibrating. So uh, you don't need to do anything about calibration. Uh, you have to be to make sure that the faders are centered when you power up or reset the device, um, and that's it. Now we have a working driver. Uh, what else do we need? We need to fire up Jack. You fire up Mix. And uh, you look inside the preferences, and in the preference pane, uh, with under input controllers, you should see a controller mapping for the DM2, and you should also see the device. Uh, the controller mapping. This is the file dm2.midi.xml that I hope you installed in your MIDI configuration for Mix, and this is the MIDI device. It's appropriately named Mixman. DM2. The first thing, if you when you fire up mix and you see the fader over there and you move the real fader a little bit to the left, is you'll see that it jumps all the way to the left. This is because of the auto calibration feature. You should then move the real fader all the way over and you'll see that the calibration has finished. Okay, that's just a minor thing. It's the same with the joystick. You should move the joystick after the driver has loaded to calibrate the thing. Um, the other uh, inputs don't need calibration, obviously. For the first nice feature of this, song selection. Uh, you can press the center button, you see the two lights go on, and you just move the cursor, and on the panel you see that the cursor moves up and down the list. The list scrolls, 
and we'll choose an oldie but goldie. Uh, the play button starts an animation which tells you that the track is playing. Um, when you press again, it goes out. Uh, the Q button, which is probably the most important thing, is over here. The Q button for the other platter is this one. So those are the basics. Um, I use the preferences for pitch independent time shift, so by turning this wheel you can hear in the background that you can reduce the speed and raise the speed to precisely position the track. Um, now for pitch changes. Pitch changes are about the second most important thing that you need to do. That's on this button. You press and hold the button and you turn the wheel. And over here you can see what that does. It lowers and it raises the pitch. To reset one of these um, pitch faders, you press the center button while holding the shift. Um, this might seem a little cumbersome, but you get used to that pretty quickly. It's a motion like this to change the pitch and like this to reset it. Okay, the same goes for highs, mid and lows. Um, but first, let me load a track into the other driver. Okay, here we go. Now, the other thing is highs, mids and lows. Uh, many DJs need kill switches. The kill switches are these three. Kill highs, kill mids, kill lows. You can see that over here. I'll fire them up again. So you can see that they're on. And the same buttons are used to regulate highs, mids and lows. Um, I just pushed the high button and if you look very closely over here, you can see that this is the fader that I'm using now. Same goes for mids and for lows. Uh, resetting works in the same way, so if you push the button and the middle button in the lower uh, portion at the same time, you get a reset. Now, another important thing is to be able to push the sync button. Uh, I mapped these two on the 2 and 3 key over here. So, um, if we reposition this track to the front and press the sync button, you can see that it synced to minus 2.1%. And uh, now I can fire this track and position it. You can see that over here. And um, I, I have to do this visually on these tracks. Um, And the tracks don't match very well. This is just a demo. There are several other things. On this button over here is the pre-fader gain, which you can see over here. On the button on the side, there is the, the, the fader itself over here. And uh, for those of you who need very precise pitch shifting, pressing this button and this button for a short period of time does tiny pitch changes. But all of this is configurable. Um, in fact, I encourage everyone to find their own mappings, especially the joystick and these buttons over here are not mapped at all currently. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's the DM2 with the new driver and uh, very good, as I think, mix integration. Um, I hope everyone finds this useful. Uh, I hope you start downloading it, going out and buying your DM2 consoles and ports. And um, well, what remains to say is thank you to the Mix development team who helped me a lot building the patches necessary to do this. And um, well, have fun with this. Thanks for watching.